It's that time again. What's up, everybody? This is Dad's Land and Fab. Hope you enjoy the show. Deuces. So it's your chopper. <laughs> <laughs> Boom! Good evening, good morning, good afternoon, and welcome to another grand show of Dads, Lads, and Kebabs. Apologizes, apologies if you can hear the chopper sound. It is a yes. fan of Mickey's broken <laughs> device of a laptop. Yeah. Is it as if you can't hear that? You why? All right, calm down, Miss. You showing your water again? Fucking hell, we're gonna get banned. You're not allowed to show water. It's illegal. <laughs> the fuck is that? Harrogate? <sighs> British spa water. Nice. This is a bottle of Harrogate Spring, my friend. Is that from <clears throat> Poundland? No. Poundy it's Landy. Is no. It, can you get that? Can you buy it in? Can you buy it in Poundland? Fuck knows. That's the sort of stuff you have on a train. I think. How do you know I'm not on a train? Because you're in your car. And it, the steering wheel was a How do you know I'm in my car? Broom, broom. Boom, boom. Chopper, chopper. <laughs> Mickey boy, how are you doing? How are you doing, my friend? I'm all right. Are you all refreshed and replenished? What the fuck are you drinking? I'm drinking Oreo Coca-Cola. Booyah! <laughs> oh, God. What, is, what even is that? It's Oreo. There's, yeah. How do you even? Uh, how do you even combine those two flavors? It's to start off it, with. It tastes like Coke, and then you have an aftertaste of Oreo. It's so fucking cool. <laughs> it is. Look. Kind of like, kind of like the first time you ate you ate a fanny. <laughs> tasted, <laughs> tasted all right to start off with, and then the aftertaste was a little bit like tuna and sweet corn. <laughs> Uh, I like Oreo though, so if it's okay, it's all good. It's not a problem, but yeah, it's, it's like the ja it's like Coca Cola Jaffa cakes. I've not had them yet either. Where where have I, have I been under a rock, or is, wait, is this a new thing? Yeah, I think I think they're in B and M. I need to go have a look. B and M, the British household standard of a shop, the United of a shop of British. Shopping empires that is still going strong. Yeah, there's a, a few TikTok accounts that go into B and M and show you all the new amazing products. They're, they're pretty good. Some bloke with big long hair, and uh, yeah, what some of the stuff. some of the stuff in there is fucking cool. But you go in there and they don't have it. <laughs> Those kind of stores. If you name a store discount or. You know what I mean? I mean, I don't know what B&M stands for, but B&M has, has grown more popular, I would say, in the last 10 years than it's ever been. It seems that every motherfucker gets... I mean... Oh, my God. Mickey, your fucking fan is doing my nothing. I don't know why, because it's, it's always been the same. I always have my laptop plugged in. If I unplug it, if I unplug the power, it might stop at some point. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. Um, yeah, every British household goes to B&M. Mm -hmm. There is nothing, there is, there is, I, but is it a poor shop though? I mean, most people that go into B&M for a couple of things at least spend about 50 quid a time. Exactly, yeah, they're, they're fucking empty their pockets I don't, at the end of I wouldn't, I wouldn't class you as a skint person if you can go and afford to do that. No. I only go B&M for my Duracell batteries, for my ghost hunting and stuff, <laughs> because they're... Pack of 12 for £5, you ain't, you're not finding that in Tesco. You're not finding that in Tesco! Listen, guys, pack of 12 here. Mickey boy in B&M. Here oh, we God. go. My review of the 12-pack Duracell batteries Ultra. Whatever, mate. Can't go wrong. Better than Pound Shop. I get the Panasonic ones from the Pound Shop. What are you talking about? Nah. Uh, my equipment needs some good shizzle. <laughs> my equipment is top. 
British Top standard shit. battery. <laughs> Top standard batteries. None of that Panasonic Chinese shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh mate, I don't. I'm not prejudiced on my batteries, mate. No, I am because when they fucking don't last long, it's like fuck's sake. I get more and more annoyed about rechargeable stuff this day and age. Rechargeable stuff pisses me off more than batteries does. At least you know with battery powered stuff, you know what you're getting. Whereas, do you remember those little TikTok lights that were, you've got? I've got the little ones. Yeah, yeah. They don't. La they don't last long at all. Well, when they're on. Yeah. When they're switched on, but they go off about... automatically as well after a few minutes. Oh, is that it? Yeah, maybe that's it. Then maybe they're not dying. Because I, I was using them for something for helping light. I was doing something the other week. That's it. When I was camping, which we we're going to talk about today, mm -hmm. in in the in the island, I had that on while I was cooking, and then suddenly they weren't on, and I'm like, oh, okay. Just Fair enough. Yeah. Fuck them. Fuck them in the... They're all, they're all cunts anyway. They're all cunts anyway, mate. Don't worry about it. No. Yes, you did go camping. I did. I went to Ireland. No, I didn't go Ireland. That was a few years ago. I went to Scotland. Yeah. What accent is that? I don't even... That, I, don't even I don't even... <laughs> Fuck! I don't you, even think accent. that was Welsh. <laughs> Listen, it was, that Indian. was terrible. That was terrible, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Go for I'm it. Fucking, I'm fucking Scottish as well. That's a bit bad, isn't it? <laughs> it's terrible. Absolutely, mate. Don't tell people that. Don't do that accent and tell people that. They'll think you're well, French. <laughs> well, funny you say that. I've got French blood in my body and Scottish. See, and told you. And English. Anything nope. else? <laughs> Anything else that fancy going in that? <laughs> no, I can't. In that no, in no, that vein. In, <laughs> in that in vein. vein. Oh mate, how would you get that? I never understand that. I'm a quarter of this, quarter of that, quarter of this. That's a lot of semen all mixed together. It's all your family's history, isn't it? Your family yeah, I know, from this still. country. Well, that's how it <sighs> works, mate. You asked. I told you. <sighs> oh, I know. But I just <laughs> like, I you're not really anything. You're just you. I'm just English because I'm fucking English, but historically. Oh. I'm bit historically, of I've got a bit of Viking bloodline. I have chap. Yeah. <laughs> so, Brokeback Mountain trip, go. Tell me about it. Yeah, so obviously we were supposed to fly, but we cancelled it to do a, a boys' road trip, which turned out pretty cool. We had a few stops along the way for a piss, a shit, and a costa, as always. Mark, Mark won like £400 on the fruities, which he always does. And it's like, fucking hell. <laughs> it's like, you got to play it to win it, mate. you got to play it to yeah. win it. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, we uh, uh, before we just before uh, we entered Scotland, just after Carlisle, we were looking for the the sign. You know, you are now entering Scotland, and we saw this like services just before, or we thought the sign was. So we pulled in there, and there happened to be one of them wind farms behind it, wind turbine things. The um, so Mark got his drone out. And we went in this layby, and he started flying it, and it was all all good. And then it it kept saying that the signal was bad, so he, he pressed the home button, and it fucking went up more, and it disappeared. Obviously, you could see on the screen, but we couldn't see oh. it anywhere. And it, the home button was supposed to bring it back to where it took off from. No, nope, it just kept going. <laughs> We're like, okay. fuck! It, it was like out of signal, and it's like, <laughs> oh shit! This is his brand new drone, and it's <laughs> like fucking hell. And then he sort of directed it by viewing the screen, so it was coming down. It took like five, ten minutes to get near to us, and then it, it actually come down. And he's like, Shit. "I bet, I bet his ass was, you know, I bet his bank sweat, was fucking sweating a bit." Yeah, <laughs> so right, he could buy a new one with his fruity win. <laughs> but yeah, so then we we entered Scotland. And we were heading to Glasgow because that's where our hotel was. And we had a, a, a location there that we had planned to go and visit. So we got to the Premier Inn. I think it was, was the Premier Inn. Yeah, Premier Inn. And I got the double bed this time, the king size bed, because Mark had it last time. And Niall's throwing his camera on the floor. <laughs> his balancing ain't that fucking good today, I tell you. 
It's not. It never is. You need to, you need to fucking practice some more. You need to turn your wheel, mate. But yeah, the uh, <clears throat> the woman on reception at the Premier Inn. Let's just say it appeared she did not like English people, or it just she didn't like me and Mark. She didn't like you. She, well, Mark was talking. I was in the background filming. So she uh, she was very blunt with him, very short, as it were. And it's like, mm, okay, this is a lovely welcome. Thank you so much. <laughs> she fancied it. She wanted. She wanted a bit of Marky. A bit of bear. <coughs> no. And uh, yeah, so this location we we had planned was uh, a place called Dalmarnock Bridge. Now this big massive red red bridge. Dalmarnock Bridge. Yeah. Dalmarnock Bridge. Dalmarnock, not Dalmarnock. Dalmarnock Bridge. There you go. And uh, it said Aye. that this ma that this man is seen hanging over the edge, and when people go near him to like stop him, he jumps, but he never Sucks hits off. the water. You're such a gay boy. <laughs> <laughs> he jumps right, off, go, and, sorry. and then and then sucks himself off. That's weird. In invisible so manner. Right, back to serious. Sorry, I shouldn't have done that. It was completely he, he always, unprofessional. He always me. makes a joke when it's my story. Oh, when it's it, his story, I listen to him, and he's, you know, right. when it's mine. Go ahead. Like, nah, 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 nah. Go ahead. Don't you just, fucking dare say that you've because, never fucking made a joke about one of my stories. Just because your beard's fucking greyer than mine now. In a Shut two, up. Two weeks. You twat, you twat. <laughs> you stomp <laughs> bumming dickhead. <laughs> You got fucking sheep wool on your fucking face. Shut the fuck up! <laughs> just, just tell your story. <laughs> yeah. I'm frozen. I can't remember what I was saying. I ain't frozen. You're frozen, mate. Then yeah, Niall's frozen. I don't give a fuck. Anyway, so hopefully this is still carrying on, people. No, I will be back at some point. My internet is working okay. Hello. Oh, there he's back there. again. Don't know. You went. That you was went you, back. mate. That was you. They didn't like that. You slagging yeah. me off. <laughs> the streamyard gods, yeah. And uh, what was I saying? It's a right, red bridge. Back, to, back to, no, go back to the story, right? So you went to this where this man yeah, hangs himself. Supposed, no, he doesn't hang himself. He, he he's hanging over the edge, looking to commit suicide, and people go near him, obviously concerned. And then when they go near him, he jumps. But he never touches the water. He vanishes before he hits the water. So that's the that's the uh, the story. Anyway, so this bridge is in a, is a working bridge. It's not abandoned or anything. There's a McDonald's about 25 yards away. So you, as you can imagine, it's a busy bridge. Cars going over it. People going over it. So we rock up, maybe 10 o'clock at night. Not really sure what's happening what the the traffic's like so there are the odd car going past obviously at that time of night but knowing that mcdonald's is just there obviously you're going to get people kids whatever and uh, so yeah we start off and we go under the bridge and it's it's fucking pitch black and it's let's just say a shithole area in glasgow and it's like hmm this is going to be interesting let's just say the night was we were more worried about the living than we were about the spirits let's just say that so we're under this bridge we're doing our experiments etc got equipment out asking for stuff and then at the end one end you can see like a, a tower block with flats and stuff and there's a long walkway to get to where we were under this bridge and you the odd occasion you would see people just staring at you like you can see them like their figures dressed in black and then they would disappear then some of them would walk towards us and we're thinking fuck's sake you know we've got all this very expensive equipment there you don't know who these people are and then we turn around and they weren't there they were obviously fucked off but then again we had like tripods and they probably could be seen as weapons maybe so that sort of helped i suppose plus me and mark aren't the smallest people <laughs> but anyway yeah so we're getting some bits and bobs and we got we were getting some words about being killed, uh, burnt, uh, burnt in fire, or killed in fire. That was it. But obviously we're not there for that. We're there for this story of this bloke. 
nothing really coming through so we decided we've been there for a while we decided to go actually onto the bridge and finish up there so if any any issues and that we can just finish and go in our car well we we were about to call it a night and this drunk couple walked past yeah and they're saying oh what are you two doing in with your cameras well uh, and i thought fuck it i'll speak to them i said you don't know any story about some geezer that this scene jumping off the bridge do you and she and this woman fucking off her tits man she was proper fucking oh and she goes no but i know about the story about the man who was burnt alive just over there and we're like what we were getting burnt killed kill, killed in fire burnt everything and it's like oh, we didn't know we, didn't, we, we did not know this story at all and then this, this woman was like, i'll take you there and i thought maybe not I'm not going to a strange place in the dark with people we don't know <laughs> you know not being fun it's about midnight at this point and uh it turns out this bloke who she was with he'd just come out of prison after being inside for 15 years for killing someone and i'm like mm, nice bloke I mean to be fair they were they were fine and then after about we were talk we couldn't get rid of them you know fair play but we couldn't get rid of them and after about sure. 10 minutes they were talking about ghost adventures oh what equipment you got and all this stuff and it's like oh nothing you know we don't use anything just in case they want to nick it or you know have a fight with us definitely stereotyping glaswegian people do apologize oh, no. but look you know, at it, you slagging off the barrows man <laughs> it is what it is and then uh, this woman starts getting arsy saying like you better not be fucking filming me and obviously i would be filming her face when she was talking about the burnt person <laughs> say that again and then she also forgot that because she was so fucking paralytic and i said okay then we've got what we need you've like blown our investigation fucking quality at the end so like, oh yeah we're gonna see you later now the bloke was fine he, he shook our hands and stuff and i'm thinking i'm gonna go and bleach my hand now <laughs> don't know where you've been but anyway um so yeah fucking awesome that was it, it is so it, it's good what we do when we go out but we do put ourselves in danger sometimes you know the, sure, these of course you do. Ab abandoned places obviously the center of glasgow you know it, it's all new to us but you know if you don't put yourselves out there you don't ever fucking learn anything do you so well that's where the footage comes from right it comes mm -hmm. from go into these places that are either like you said you get the people the with the strangers of the night or you're going to unsafe unsecure derelict you know the the, the grimmest of the grim places so yeah mm -hmm. of course you'd put yourself in that position yeah so obviously we went home happy next morning we had mcdonald's breakfast as you do because obviously at premier inn you've got kfc you've got mcdonald's you've got all these you've got a pub harvest and all that shit always next to them and uh yeah so then we went back to the bridge to do some day filming like the drone etc seeing what it looked like in the day and then we headed up towards edinburgh to obviously go to Cramen island which was the original plan anyway we just needed somewhere to fill for for glasgow sort of thing and we ended up going past the Celtic ground, the football, the football club. So we got out there, took some photos. Mark parked in a bit; he weren't allowed to park. <laughs> but hey ho, everyone else is stopping there, so we just parked on this road right at the entrance where all these people kept getting out, like the youth team or something for training and that. So like, fucking hell, Mark! <laughs> so I just leave it there. Fuck it, we don't care. And uh, yeah, so we headed over to to Edinburgh. And there's a car park which we didn't know about before obviously we were busting it last time we were there and it's a car park basically on the beach got on the like the the promenade as you call it so that was quite mm -hmm. cool you can park there 24 7 and it's all free which is really good so That's we went good. down yeah we went down to the the bit of causeway you could get onto and obviously the tide was in we couldn't get over till about 10 10 p.m and we got there about five so we went down and had a look obviously there's a you can get about a quarter of the way before you have to go down these steps and then you walk out properly or you could get to these steps and that was it so obviously people walk up and down so we were just chilling and then mark got the drone out obviously do some drone footage and that for the for the video and we saw these people on the island i thought well they're they're on there surrounded by sea they're not getting off at the moment and there was about five of them like in this 
the complete center you can see them all like around some sort of campfire I thought oh that's not good you know hopefully they'll be gone later and then you get all these boats coming back and forth because obviously the, the lifeguards are there you just ring the coast guard and they'll come and get you if you get stuck over there uh, so yeah that was that was alright we went to have some food and I'll tell you that this was the only food I had in three days that was real food because we'd have Burger King McDonald's and McDonald's and ugh all this shit it's just I'm like not, drinking diesel in it <laughs> yeah it's just not good we had mac, mac and cheese and garlic bread and a nice coffee and it's like oh this was this was good and it was quite cheap as well so I was happy about that and we come out you Even know after about 45 minutes we were in this pub this was this was near the beach as well and we come out and we couldn't see anything the fog had come in you couldn't even see that the start of the causeway that we could get onto before you couldn't even see that you couldn't see 10 meters in front of you and it's like oh my god where's this come from yeah so we walked out to the causeway bit where you could get to and it's so surreal it's like you're stuck in this mist it looked fucking work cool. so obviously we killed time and all that and uh, we headed down to the beach half nine I'd say but you see the thing is we had all our camping gear our ghost hunting equipment and our tent so I don't know if you've seen the pictures I had a backpack on my front a backpack on the correct way round and holding a tent in one hand and a camera in the other hand now my right arm was fucked anyway but the pain it was fucking awful so we got down to the beach we started walking it must have took us about half an hour to walk across i was gonna say how far was the walk from the car to the to the island it from the start of the causeway it's about half an hour in okay it's quite far then. Oh, Not long. obviously at, at this at this point it was pitch black yeah it was proper night time we had night vision on the camera and you could see about I don't know foot in front of you and all you could see was like the the water vapor in the mist it's very fucking weird like my beard was dripping good footage though eh? yeah it looked fucking cool and there were some bits to like smooth road as you go going over and we kept nearly fuck I nearly fell in because <laughs> I slipped and you can't see anything it's just fucking dark obviously we had lights on but the light didn't do fuck all it's like when you have headlights on in the car and it's foggy you can't see fuck all it just makes it worse. Shit. just no. lights up the fog yeah, yeah that's basically what all it was and we we couldn't see the end of the causeway which made it worse which made it like we were just walking and walking it's like oh i was in so much pain my shoulders carrying probably 30 40 kilograms with both bags on me and it's like fucking awful we kept stopping taking them off and having a rest as we got over well anyway we got in there and we walked up to the side so the there's a building at the entrance like one of the bunkers that uh, apparently now has a big scottish flag painted on it which looks pretty cool to be fair it looks quite good and we walked up and thought the the way we normally walked through obviously through the center with all the the grassland and obviously the rocks around the outside of the island where the beach is well, you can't see fuck all couldn't see so we had to go that back down to the beach and try and walk through round the side because we were heading for the f the far corner where the bunkers were that we slept last time like a little wooded camping area well after about i don't know five minutes of walking you, we could smell like fire and i thought okay and i, I was a bit ahead of mark i said you could smell it he goes yeah and i looked over and there's a fucking tent there big tent with chairs round but there was no no one at it and I thought oh fuck's sake so anyway we kept going we must have been halfway through about another 15 minute walking and we could hear shouting like a proper full-on party shouting like blokes being loud and annoying basically and we're thinking oh like what do we do <laughs> they they went this sound was coming from at the far end of the island where our camping area was where we camped last time where all the buildings are that we wanted to investigate anyway and i was at this point my morale had gone to the toilet yeah it's proper yeah. in the shit. i was thinking if if we if we leave now we've probably got an hour before the tide comes in and we can't get back or 
do we find somewhere else to camp and you know what sort of video we're we gonna make like we're on an island but everywhere we want to go that's related to the there, war yeah, and that, there's, pe there's people being fucking bellends and we're so <sighs> so mark said there's a there's a wooded area here we'll just we'll just pull off the path lucky it was right in front of us and I thought okay then you know i was i went to go to be if i'm honest with you i was like no nah, let's just go back to the car fuck the video off like you don't know who these people are you know they could be fucking druggies they could be drunk they could be doing anything and we can't get off we're stuck there you know there's no way we can escape the tides in so we unpacked our stuff set up our tent and to be fair it was a nice little secluded bit under some trees and there was like an, a big abandoned house that, right in front of us covered in ivy so it's quite cool we had a little clearing to do stuff so we set up our tents uh, had a look round uh, started cooking with our cooked burgers we got we got some haggis and stuff from Tesco on the way some sausages and fucking it was well good started cooking I think we started cooking about 1 a.m. that's when we started we had food at 1 a.m. from like 5 fucking Gotchops. fucking massive burgers we had three massive fucking burgers and uh, yeah that that was pretty. there's nothing better than camping as you know as your recent trip to Peak District camping at night time in the dark with a stove the, oh, the, nice, sizz man. the sizzling of the bacon and the burgers the and the smell the, 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 the cold everything yeah yeah it's fucking awesome and uh yeah we, we started investigating about 2 a.m which was like fucking hell. last time we were going to we were in bed before then and um it was quite good you know we kept hearing footsteps around us we didn't go too far because we didn't know who was obviously who was there and etc and we got some good stuff and um yeah some of the equipment didn't work for some reason even though everything was charged and i think mark had us like a smoke machine but he had one of them anchor power generators with him yeah big ones yeah 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 that, that has uh three pin plugs etc and you can plug in and it, it it turned on it just kept dying and it was fully charged and it you could see it 100 percent. so something was going on there because we we're going to use the vortex thing with the light the lasers and in the smoke you can see faces if you still frame it so yeah that was a bit of a, a shame but you know and then we went to bed we, we, I think we went to bed about 4 a.m. <laughs> just and, as it was getting light <laughs> well no luckily it, didn't, it doesn't get light to about 7 there but it it obviously I fell asleep straight away I woke up at 5 to <laughs> obviously the return of mark is like oh my god you're not even in the same tent as me and you're fucking my floor is vibrating it's, it's like when you hear a snore it's like they're there on your <laughs> face just doing it to you it's like i hate snorers man i fucking hate snorers yeah he it, he's the fucking worst i've ever i would say slept with but you know what i mean like been in a room where <laughs> it's, it's not like, that kind of island <laughs> no it's not that island it's like fucking hell but anyway then he stopped for a little bit thought right get some sleep and at this point i had i had earphones in listening to podcasts i had what did I, what did i have i had some fucking other headphones in that got like these that go over the ear as well so and i could still hear him so for fuck's sake but anyway he shut up and then the plane started didn't they 5 a.m the planes fucking started every 10 minutes it sounded like they were going through the forest where we were they were that fucking loud the planes and i'm like well, this is no fucking hope is it you know let's just get up let's just get up <laughs> i had about an hour of sleep obviously i had a rest from laying there but you know it's not it's like, oh my god fucking it's not hell. the same so, though is it so basically everything that we planned for this island and the investigation did not happen and do you know why this this worked because everything beforehand the videos the drone the the planning beforehand everything worked out perfect apart from the investigation but obviously we're just going to direct it differently from the war stuff to just being on an abandoned island instead so yeah and we said a nice nice drive home about six hours seven hours yeah and and nobody like... says a nice six hour drive well i went driving so i don't care but we had a couple of stops um 
but yeah it, it is good i'm so glad we did the road trip instead of the uh, the airplane because obviously we were flying originally because we wouldn't have had hardly anything taken with us because you don't no. have your little your backpack and your and your cabin bag i mean you can't get fuck all on there then we'd have to hire a car take it back and it's like oh, it's fucking shit it's too much yeah, plus the timings. We wouldn't have been able to go to that bridge on Friday night. So, I right. you know. It's, uh, but yeah, it was it was a good trip. Really enjoyed it. Videos are in production at the moment. I think Mark's is one is already out tonight at six o'clock. His bridge one's already Ooh. done. So when you're, when you're watching this. Bridge you know, out. Uh, I'm doing the Kramer one for Halloween. I'm currently working on the, the bridge one at the moment. So, by the time you watch this or listen to this, it's probably already out. Because I'm hoping it's so, this weekend. The island is going to be Halloween. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Okay. Yeah, it's a night. Nice, nice, exactly. nice Halloween special. Yeah, why not? Yeah. God, you got to have a video at Halloween, don't you? It's not very Halloweeny, but it's still quite scary, to be fair. So, that's good. Did you not get? Did you not get close to the people, or just think about like going and introducing yourself and be like, "Look, this is what we're doing here." No, oh, no, fuck that. Because you always get dickheads. What are we doing? Whenever we see people, and wherever I am in, in the, like the night time, in the public or whatever, we always say we're exploring, we're not ghost hunting, because everyone goes, oh, let me let me join in. It's fucking cool. And then it's like, fuck off. Leave me alone. I fucking hate, I hate that. No, I, I never go and introduce myself. Unless I have to. Then uh, it's a different story. No, fuck that. Yeah, we could have gone over there. We could have filmed some bits. We could have got bashed up. We could have had stuff broken. We could have been kidnapped and molested. But, you know. Or we could have just filmed what we did. <laughs> yeah. Fucking drama, man. <laughs> Says him, oh, don't leave sorry. his house. <laughs> I'll leave my house. You don't come on a ghost hunt with me, though, do you? There you go. I have Shut, not, up. I, Shut up, I've not bitch. been on a ghost hunt. I have. I've been on one. You have? No. You ran off? <laughs> Fuck, mate, it's it's your world. I'd, That's what I'm I'd, saying. Mate, I'd, I'd come on a ghost hunt, I would. How far would you go? Would you go to a, a, an explore? See, again, what he's being mean? sexual. Would you come on uh, no. to an abandoned building? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah? Yeah, I'd okay. do an abandoned building. Because your brother used to go with me all the time. I'd, do it. I'd so, go to an abandoned building. Do you come crisping with us? Is it even what's there now? Is there anything fucking there? Is there anything? Yeah, there's two buildings still there. Are they eventually going to be gone as well? No, because they're listed. But sure, because they're building right around the area. Oh, they're, they've built already, mate. Yeah. I remember what Crispins used to look like as a kid, like and like big white building. And I remember, I remember driving past or getting close to it at one point because I used to go, I used to go swimming across the road from there because that's where I had my swimming lessons. What Princess Star Marina? Was it? No. I don't know. There was that, a, I'm sure the hospital a, had facilities. No, no, no. It was I had like it was like boys brigade swimming lessons every Monday across from Crispins, mm. and I remember, oh, no. I just remember seeing the white building. The long white building with the cages on the window, thinking, I wonder what goes on in there. See, I've never, I've never been there when it was in use, and when did it shut? Two thousand. Not ninety-five. Ninety-five. It was just left everything inside, apart from probably uh, patients' records, etc. So they went to wherever the new hospital, or whatever, Berrywood. <sighs> Very much, yeah. Down the road, yeah, around the corner. But the fact that it's just left, and then obviously it's all locked up. But after, say, probably a couple of months, someone would have smashed a window, broke a door. So got people, in, yeah. So people would. Have got, I, mean. I would. I would. I've seen pictures online of the corridors with wooden flooring in, rather than the concrete that's there now, or it was yeah, there. Yeah. With the each room had a door with coloured doors, rather than just empty brickwork. Yeah, yeah. So I've seen some pictures online that show it in sort of how it probably was. But yeah. 
Was it you that was it you that found a bed? Did you find a bed in there? Yeah, me and your brother. <laughs> like an actual set up bed. Ma massive metal antique looking king size fucking four poster bed. Oh, you know quite some dodgy shit's been filmed there. Someone probably filmed a porno there. Yeah. A bit of only fans Brilliant. in the asylum. The, men the mental, asyl mental asylum <laughs> porno. That'd be. F that'd, oh, fucking hell. Oh, imagine if you found that. That'd be fucking weird. Oh, no, you'd kind of be like, I want to watch it because I know the place. <laughs> but... I've been there. Where where her ass is, I stood there. <laughs> <laughs> where those juices are blowing. <laughs> oh my god, that would be some sick, some proper sad, sadistic shit, wouldn't it? Some fucking <laughs> mate, people, people, mate, people shagging graveyards. I'm sure someone shagged in your graveyard, mate. Probably have. Yeah. For me personally, I don't understand the appeal. <laughs> You know, I know I know someone who shagged someone in a graveyard. It was like, like their first date sort of thing. They met a man. And their first like, date, their yeah, first sure. date, and that's it. Right? Yeah, they, Honestly, they went whoever... somewhere, somewhere to fuck. I think. So. Right, graveyard. Listen, of <laughs> all places, of all places, you could have gone cinema. Do you know what I mean? Back row. That's been done. Tired and tested that machine. Right. All like you can rent a hotel for a fucking you could just get a travel lodge for an hour like pretend you're staying for the night whatever book it yeah. for the 29 quid just say we'll be done in an hour mate 15 minutes if that <laughs> but a graveyard on a first date what a slag wait do you know, are they really good friends <laughs> not really no still slag it's uh when I was upside down again Hello there, no, you, Jimmy. Oh, no, there you are. You went quiet. You were like loud and then quiet. No. Fuck your phone's upside down. down. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a granddad now as well. Did yes, you... you are. Congratulations, old man. No, thank you. I don't. I don't know what that means. Contain that contains that you're a granddad. Like you got a cardigan. I have in the past. I don't. Anymore. Have you got a Zimmer friend? No, I got Croc Slippers though. You got Viagra? No. What do you want, sir? What else? <laughs> I've got Mate, glasses. I'm not even wearing my glasses. I'm supposed to be wearing them. Yeah, but I've there's a rule. They've got, they got to be there. They've got to be there now. You look, <gasps> got to the I've got some to tell you. I've got a parking ticket at Western Fable. Oh, were you there more than three hours? Yeah. I never knew. Obviously, I was, you know, working. And oh, I was yeah. like, what, yeah. am I what am I supposed to do? I've got a parking ticket. I'm fucking livid. I didn't even know they did parking tickets. Yeah, yeah, they have done for a long time. No one told I me. I think it's stupid though because obviously you can go up there, you can do your shopping for two hours, you could go get your hair cut, or if you're a woman, hairdresser. That's exactly. That, that's what that I could did. be three hours. You know, you could go and have lunch with your friends at the same time, meet for coffee or whatever. That's another hour. Go gym there. Gym, gym's there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's what I was thinking. That's Apparently, you're supposed hours. to tell them. Yeah, you tell the security you woman. I've done it before, yeah. yeah. But then how do they, what do they do? What they do, they, they write your number down and then they go to put it through their system, I think. Right. But yeah, I don't know. I don't know how it works, but that's the bloke. I'm fucking, I was livid. Yeah. Fucking li I paid it. Yeah, well, yeah. Livid. What, what, what's the price on it? Uh, 50 quid. Is that before or after? Oh yeah, if you yeah, it was just paid before, but if you leave it, it goes up to eighty. Yeah. Oh, okay. Bastards, absolute bastards. Yeah, I don't know what to say. Um, I, they're, they're just anyone tries to get money out of everybody nowadays. <laughs> fuck yeah, it, mate. You'll get fined for anything in this day and age. Yeah, you just gotta never leave your house. 
Stay indoors, freeze to death, and you're fucking good. That, mate, even that costs you money. I know. Even staying in your house costs you money. you got to buy food, and fucking food's just ridiculous prices this day and age. Like, it's getting cold now already, mate. I know it's getting cold, so I put slippers on. I put slippers on all week this week. Wow. And I've had jump, I've had like joggers on around the house, whereas it's just been shorts normally. Now it's joggers. Ooh. Are they Ooh. nice joggers? Ooh. <laughs> no, they're like my. Do you know, like house ones. I've got a pet. Yeah, house. You know, like the ones I've got, like a little bit of paint on them, a little yeah. bit of this, a little bit of that whole. Yeah. The kind of ones that I'm not letting go of because they are useful. Everyone's got to have a shit pair of shit pair of joggers or a shit pair of shorts because yeah. that piece of shit clothing is like oh I've got to go tip I've got to go to the tip and take a load of rubbish or I've got to do this or I'm like just doing a shit job like I wore the same joggers for painting the fence the other, in summer yeah no I was not going to wear his Gucci jeans is he so. Gucci jeans my dickhead <laughs> I've never owned anything Gucci I don't think no I saw I, some I've never... I saw I saw some bloke at a funeral today. He had some Gucci slip-ons on, you know, with no socks, with the trousers, like tight black jeans. Yeah, it was a massive, massive Caribbean funeral today. Mm. And uh, it was weird though, because they were there a long time. And then afterwards, the amount of flowers was fucking ridiculous. Like really good. There was well, like wife, the name of the woman, the daughter, uh, Mark, Auntie, all this big fucking flower ones, and about twenty bunches of flowers as well, plus crosses in flowers, big love heart wreaths and everything. And I'm like, wow. So after, obviously, this was a a concrete chambers one, so no digging involved. And oh, they ooh, had a chamber already, like a family yeah, chamber. You can, or... Yeah, no, you can just buy them. Obviously, you you pre-purchase or whatever. Um, How much is that? That must be. Uh, Money. I don't know. It's it's you can get two two coffins in there, and it, it's pretty. You just take the top off, and it's like massive fuck off slabs. There's like three layers of slabs, and then you get to like the middle one about three four foot down, and then there's eight more slabs that go across, and then you take them up, and then there's obviously the floor probably another three foot below. So they're they're, they're, they're massive um, concrete already in the ground. Obviously, they got put there at some point, but yeah. So, but the thing is, I want to talk about. I was, I was going through reading all the the messages like oh, to my wife, to my sister, to my mom, and all this. And I fucking fucking, I'm gonna cry in a minute. Never ever get like that. About this for me, it's just a job. Yeah, like next, you know, are we gonna be really busy? Am I missing lunch because a funeral at lunchtime? Things like that. Like what we gotta to do to get this cleared up and onto the next one. And I'm, I'm thinking, fucking hell, Mark, I had to walk away. I'm like, I ain't reading these no more. And I don't know why. I didn't know this person. I just started getting really emotional, and I thought, fucking, hell, what's wrong with me? And I thought, oh, I need, to, I need to have a good cry again at some point because I don't know, something's weird going on in my brain. Tanks backed up. <laughs> fucking. <laughs> I don't, I don't know what it was because obviously I get upset if I if I see people that I know and I like they get upset so it's sort of contagious but for people that I don't know it doesn't bother me but this I was reading these Wait, and thinking, it just shows you got a fucking heart it's, you got a heart mate that's all it yeah, is yeah I, I don't know I think it was the wife one to my wife I really love you and miss you and I'm like oh well fuck and then I, do you know what it, it, that that for me I think you're right in what you're saying like when you when you see that stuff and you know that somebody's feeling that pain mm. how do you comprehend that you know normally I'm cold to it because it's my job yeah no, yeah but, but obviously this other occasion times, you wasn't no it's the second time now in about 30 funerals that I was like oh oh something's going on here you know look away look at the bush <laughs> Walk away from it, because and I just thought, oh, well, you know, I don't know. It's a lot, right? It is, yeah. We've had loads of funerals this week, loads last week, loads next week as well. It's just getting to that cold season where everybody's dropping it, and yeah. it's just non-stop. So, 
but yeah, obviously. Does does it does it not make? Do you think about your own funeral? Whilst obviously since doing this job, have you thought about death more? Would you say? Um, I I, I think about how I want my like my funeral, how I want people to visit, etc. And will they visit? Mm. Are they going to keep on top of it? Because obviously we see other people, they have the funeral and they've not been back in like five months. And it's like, okay, they were liked, <laughs> you know. It's really sad sometimes. I, yeah, I don't like that. I think that's why I don't really want a place of rest as such. Mm. Because I don't want people to feel like, I mean, as the saying goes, don't stand mm -hmm. by my grave because I'm not yeah. there. Like, you're not there. You're, you're, yeah. you're your shell's there but I don't mm. want people to feel obligated that alright let's go and see Grandad Niles Miserable Stone you know yeah like look look for me in photographs or videos or the podcast listen if you found this podcast and I'm dead alright <laughs> hope you enjoy the show do see some fuck off fuck off <laughs> <laughs> no so the only yeah I was going to say to you about it anyway because obviously mm. while we're on the subject Obviously, I've been reading about the elderly couple who are going to be the first couple to commit euthanasia together. Oh, right. Is that in Switzerland? No, here. Can you do it here? Is it here? It must be here. Is So they're doing it in the death, the new death pod? I think that's Switzerland. It's a new version. Okay. It's illegal right. in so, England. Oh, they're a British couple that are going yeah. to do it. Yeah. Oh, okay. So... so the lady is severely ill. Right. He is riddled. I think he's riddled with arthritis, lots of pain, and they both just said they've had enough. Yeah. That old age, old age is not kind to you. You know, it's not. You know, it's one worry after another. You're a big dependence. They they feel like they're a big dependency on everybody else around them, and while they're still sound of mind they've chosen to say well actually do you know what I'd rather be in control of my own my own death wow so fair play apparently how it works is that um, the they go into the tank and obviously they want to do it they basically said they want to die in each other's arms in the tank in the pod which it just looks like a do you know like an like an airport lounge pod sort of thing so that you could just scooch back in like a water slide yeah water. yeah like a bit it looks a bit like an egg i'd say right okay do you know like do you know when you used to be able to get those aliens inside the egg yes kid. yeah and grow like yeah. yeah um but obviously so they want to do it together um and how they do it is obviously i think they fill the tank with nitrogen very slowly so but it's, apparently it's painless, they won't know it's coming, they'll just fall asleep naturally. And that'll be it. Right. Uh, what do you wow. think about that? I think that that takes some fucking balls to do that. As, as much as the pain that they're in. I've only ever thought I was scared of death when COVID was around and I got COVID. And for that split second, I thought I could die now. I could die in a couple of days. And I fucking, I, I was really, I was really scared. I did. I was and scared to, have to the, sleep. And to have the balls to go and travel to another country, obviously you're, lots of travelling time, you're waiting around, you're thinking about what you're going to do, you know, it's playing on your mind even more. And then getting to the building where it's going to be, and then meeting the doctor that's going to do it. You know, do you want a cup of tea or something beforehand? And a biscuit? Wow like there's so many opportunities to, to change your mind and I, I don't that's that takes fucking massive bollocks to do that it does euthanasia in switzerland and those kind of countries, scandinavian countries and things like that it's really you know they've got like retreats where you could just basically have a bed mm. that overlooks a lake and they give you the medication and you have to sign all your waivers and everything and you can just yeah, do yeah. it i suppose if you're like a vegetable as well after whatever illness accident whatever 
that could be. But then again, you probably wouldn't be have you wouldn't have the capacity to say yes, take me there. Do you think it's selfish? To, do you think it's it, it, it's classed as selfish of them though that they want to do it? No, obviously it's their choice. I know, but the only person that misses you when you die is your family like if you commit suicide you're not helping yourself you're, you're punishing your family because you're only the only people that are upset are the ones that are left behind yeah, but yeah. if you're in pain constantly and you're sick of your life no matter what who's in your life and the fact that you're in such pain and you can't you just it would be a nice just to ugh, take it away people get to that same with cancer and that so Oh, yeah, I, I can imagine a lot of people feel <clears throat> like that, and and feel a bit of a burden on people as well. I I, I would never want to be in the position where people are just you know like people are pitying you, where they're like, oh look, Mickey's pissed himself again. Yeah, you know, yeah. Niall shot himself. <laughs> I was gonna have to clean him up. Sort of, you know what I mean? Someone wiped my ass with a damp cloth, like. No way, not a chance. No. And I it's, imagine, and imagine the people before me that are in that position probably said the same. Because mm. we're, you know, we were all sort of sound of mind and compass mentors at one point in our lives, right? There must be a time when it gets too much, and that's when people yeah. make that really hard decision. I just want fair, control. That's all I want. Fair play to them. Yeah, don't. we I'm going to decide when I'm going. I'm going to decide when I lose this pain that I'm in every day, all day. Can't sleep, can't move in the daytime without being in excruciating pain. That must be awful, especially for family and friends to help them and watch as well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I suppose. Because that, then again, that's what must feel like the worst part of it is you feel like you're just a constant burden. But then, could you go through it and think, right, I'm never going to see my. Could you could you do that? I'm never gonna see my daughter again. That's it now. After four o'clock, never gonna see my daughter again. Or your grandkids. Yeah, see, that's the, that's what would that's what would kill me. But at the same time, I, you're going anyway, right? Would you rather go out like? Well, at least he knew what you were fucking saying. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, go on your terms. You know, like. And I'll, mm. I'll, I'll admit that I'd be like, I watched there was um, there was like a British gangster that did it recently. Um, I don't know if you heard of him. He's called Dave Courtney. Oh, Dave Courtney, yeah. I listened to yeah. Liam Tuff's podcast with him. Three of his. Yeah, I, I really yeah, yeah, like. Yeah. I, I mean, I don't know him. Yeah. Don't really, but I liked everything. He had a lot of motivational stuff. He was quite inspirational and. I like the fact that he just lit like he wasn't for me. I don't think he was gangster gangster. I just think he lived a gangster lifestyle. Um, People treated treated him like he did, yeah. And I know how he yeah, died yeah. as well, locked in his house in his bedroom. Shot himself, with a gun. yeah. Yeah, shot himself. Yeah. Yeah. And mm. up up coming to that event, he did a podcast, um, not with Liam Tuff, the other guy. Um, Gosh. I can't, he, He's Gosh. quite similar to Liam, yeah. Yeah, there's a f there's a few uh, around that only do like just, gangsters and that. And he just said like, he just said I'm in pain. He's like, my knees are every day. He's like, I can't get up and down the stairs. I can't sit in a car. Mm. It's like I don't want people fucking looking at me. And he basically said in that video, he said I will end it before then. He said I mm. don't want to be, you know, in a in a home would you like it in a beaker and all that shit that's what he was saying and he just took the choice and did it he was like do you know what? I'm not no. yeah he had excruciating arthritis didn't he he'd had cancer a couple yeah. of times heart attack liver issues so he was yeah, yeah. it wasn't um, the full bit of health was he so. no but he made the decision himself mm. you know and God like, and I just think I know that suicides talked about so much and obviously people always wonder why people do it and you know and I, you know I think it's one of the big things that people should talk about however I think also you've got to understand a little bit of why people do it because people always go like you said people first think about the people that are left behind that's the people you hurt but then at the same time 
you know, in some of these people, like, you know, the two people choosing to commit euthanasia or, well, euthanasia, I, you know, have their own control over their own destiny. Hmm. It's a big thing, right? But then again, you can also have people that uh, rely on insulin, type 1 diabetes. They can quite easily kill themselves with an overdose. Oh, that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's pretty pain from what I understand or from what I know it, it's pretty painless you just like pass out I um so, I read a story yesterday about a bloke that accidentally killed himself by he was splitting do you know frozen burgers yeah yeah knifed it knifed uh, down the middle slipped yeah. went, in, okay. went into his chest yeah he killed himself I have used knives to separate them fucking frozen bastards, but I don't aim it at myself. I do it on the worktop and slowly wiggle it, just a little bit. I killed himself, That's... man. Wow. <laughs> mental, what? absolutely what? mental. What a fucking way to end on death, like the old days. Oh, like <laughs> the old days. Good talk, talk about. It. The thing is, I just think, fucking hell, man, you should talk about it. Like, yeah. not all the time, but fucking, it's... <laughs> I do, every age, day. <laughs> I want to do a podcast, I want to do a show on age, because I want to, I want to, and I want to get a few guests if we can, I'd like to, you know, because I haven't actually spoke to Mark yet, so I'd like to get Mark on, maybe for a chat, and just, what it feels like to accept your age. I'm in that, pro, I'm in that mindset at the moment where I'm accepting things of, you know, where I'm at what I need to do you know like I'm pushing on my knees when I'm standing up in the morning I never thought that should, that fucking day would come in you know yeah welcome These are the to things the fucking I'm, world <laughs> like honestly I put in the morning when I stand up I'm like right pressure down boom go gone with the days where I was like literally like scissor kicking out of bed <laughs> I did that this morning to be fair and then my calves are so fucking tight as I walk to the, the bathroom, and it's like, ah, oh. that's not it. Young. It's my calves. <laughs> when I when I walk when I walk for that first piss, yeah. and I'm like, ah, nothing beats that first piss, man. I'm telling you. Yeah, so fucking tight. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck you know. But guys, thank you for joining us on another episode of the As Lads and Kebabs. If you like this, this week's episode, <laughs> give us a like follow add a share and all's left to say is really it's deuces fuck off and please depart with a swear word